Thank you, Mr Speaker. Now, I, I want to begin um, with something that Frankie Boyle actually said. And he pointed out that it makes no sense to say that the situation in Gaza is too complex for a ceasefire, because ceasefire is one of the oldest and simplest terms yeah. to understand. It means stop firing. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's so simple that it's actually designed to be heard and understood in the middle of a literal battle. So there is no middle ground when it comes to a ceasefire. You either follow the order or you don't. You either stop firing or you don't. Yeah. Now, during the 2014 crisis, there was an estimated 2,251 Palestinian deaths. The then Prime Minister rightly called for an immediate and unconditional ceasefire. Yeah. But if we fast forward 10 years to the current conflict, we have a death toll of nearly 30,000. And that's not including the bodies that have yet to be recovered from yep, underneath absolutely. the rubble. Yeah, yeah. And yet the very same man, now Foreign Secretary, is failing to support a ceasefire. And that num it, it, nearly 70,000 people have also been injured. So according to Amnesty International, the death rate in Gaza right now is one death every four minutes. It won't just be bombs that are killing Palestinians, it's poor sanitation yep. and malnutrition as well now. We know that people are starving, people being reduced to eating grass and animal feed. In January last month, over half of all aid deliveries were denied access and could not get through to those who currently need it. Less than half of hospitals in Gaza are even partially functioning, and the few that are will quickly run out of supplies unless Israel allows aid through. Now, since 2008, Israel have refused entry to any UN agency individuals, which to me is a giant red flag in and yep. of itself. Yeah, but despite these attempts to shield themselves and hide from any accountability, we know that war crimes are being committed in Gaza. Yeah. Churches sheltering hundreds of innocent Palestinians being bombed to the ground. There's been strikes against people in refugee camps and hospitals. Just earlier this week, there was reports that Israeli forces ordered the evacuation of a hospital only to start sniper fire on those who attempted to leave, leaving 2,500 folks still trapped in the hospital. Israel's own Minister of Defence said that there would be, and I quote, a complete siege on Gaza, no electricity, no food, no water, no gas. Now, as the occupying power, yep. Israel has an obligation yes. yep. under international law to ensure the basic needs of Gaza's civilian population are met. They are not doing that. Yep. Now, the International Court of Justice specifically directed Israel to take immediate and effective measures to enable the provision of basic services and humanitarian assistance. They are not doing that. Yet Israel still refuses to reinstate the water supply they so cruelly shut off months ago. Yeah, yeah. They're stopping medicine getting in, they're stopping food entering Gaza. And despite the growing likelihood of famine that they will have created, they still are not budging. Now, the actions of Hamas, let's be absolutely clear, they were horrific and unjustifiable. But as I said earlier to the Shadow Minister, the people of Palestine are not Hamas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Israel's disproportionate and indiscriminate bombing of civilians, combined with everything else that we know, has got to be the very definition of collective punishment, yep. yes. which, as yep. we all yep. know, is illegal under international yep. law. It's a war crime. And this is why it's so important how this place responds. Because in many respects, the ending of the violence in Gaza rests in the hands of the countries supplying the money and the weapons to Israel. Now, the arms trade treaty bans the sale of weapons where there is a concern that they may be used to breach international law. Well, given the International Court of Justice has found that there's a plausible risk that Israel is committing genocide, it is upon the UK to revoke all arms licenses yeah. and military yeah. equipment yeah. Yeah. to yeah. Israel, yeah. Yeah. otherwise we break the own that. treaties that we've signed up to. Yeah. Frankly, warm words and platitudes will not cut it. Only action will. Now, that's one death every four minutes, and the time 
that this debate happens today and we all talk amongst ourselves, a hundred more people will be dead that were alive this morning. The least we can do is call for a ceasefire. Because if we don't, we will be morally and directly complicit in every single life lost and every single family destroyed in Gaza. The route to peace, the route to justice, the route to any humane conclusion to this begins with an immediate and unconditional ceasefire. Because anything less from us and future generations will quite rightly never forgive us or forget. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.